Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Danny, your friendly neighborhood DIYer. And this is another episode of Home A Home, a series where I take you on my DIY journey to transform my 150 year old farmhouse. Some transformations will be permanent, some transformations will be in the mindset that we're doing something now and we're probably gonna do something much bigger one day. But regardless of what I share, we are all in this together and I hope Hope that you guys find a little bit of DIY inspiration through it all. Today is a much anticipated episode, mostly for me. <laughs> I've been so excited to share this one with you guys. It's probably one of my favorite makeovers I think I've ever done. And I know that's saying a lot because I'm biased and it's in my own house and this is definitely my own style, but I see my growth with the design of this room. So I hope you guys agree. I hope you guys love it. Welcome to my living room makeover. I've shared the beginning of this journey where my partner and I tore down the entire ceiling on a whim to expose the old Joyce, which was a dream come true for me. I cried, <laughs> laughed, celebrated that wallpaper coming down. <sighs> It was a hoot. But now, it is officially time to see this full transformation come together in one epic makeover. Editor, roll the tape. Boop. Before we get into the makeover, let's first talk about where the living room design is right now. And I can tell you, it is nothing special at the moment. The walls are dark, the furniture and general decor is mismatched, there is a lot of faux fur texture happening, not sure why, and how we like that rug that's too small. I mean, just beautiful. This room just became the, I just moved in, we own too much stuff dumping ground until we were ready to figure out what we wanted to do with it. But I'll tell you, there are a lot of pieces in this space that do have potential and will have purpose. I bought them for my vision, but in this room right now, no story is being told. Let me tell you why I say story. It's my opinion that every room in your home can tell a story, and it's deciding what story you want that room to tell that will dictate the design and where you want to go with anything that goes inside it. After I opened up my ceiling, this story became so clear to me. It was as if ripping down that ceiling was me ripping out the old pages from a book, leaving room for me to tell a new story in this space. And believe me, I had a good one to tell. This living room makeover is definitely a mix of vintage farmhouse meets mid-century modern. The goal is clean lines, organic touches, and streamlined shapes. So let's go through this plan. To start, we are getting rid of the blue gray and replacing it with a warm, rich, creamy white. From there, I'm framing the room with a big white eight x 10 rug just to help lift the dark floors and add a cozy feel to the space. Now that my dog is old enough, I'm finally ready to bring in the furniture pieces of my dreams. I want a beautiful L-shaped tan leather couch that not only looks chic, but will be super comfortable as well. Second to that, I saw Lone Fox use the same chair in his living room makeover, and when I saw it, I was like, oh yeah, I need you. So to pull in some wanted black accents, I've picked out this black chair that's simple yet so delicious with its mix of wood tones and leather. We got some cozy accents. I'm a sucker for a cozy vibe, who isn't? For lighting, I want to source a black arched light for behind the couch and some farmhouse lighting elements in black or gold, still deciding. Of course, we need some wood accents. I hope to find a live edge coffee table and side tables along with open wood shelving that I will DIY to show off some of my favorite modern farmhouse and antique decor pieces. Art will be minimal in this space, but I will highlight a large Matisse photo I've had my eye on for a long time now and a few other small shelf art pieces. And finally, don't think I forgot the ceiling. First, I'm going to be whitewashing the ceiling boards with white while the joists stay their beautiful wood self and I'll be adding new trim around the room to finish it off beautifully. So that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Good morning, everybody. It is officially day one of Living Room Makeover and I'm actually both excited and terrified for the amount of work that I have over the next four days. But the good thing is all my article pieces came and uh, I'm excited. We're not gonna open it yet because we have a lot to accomplish in this room. So I am going to get all the walls prepped and uh, we're gonna start painting. Say goodbye to these bluey gray walls because it's coming down. Okay, pop up. We got 
gotta get everything to the middle of the room. Ugh. The first plan of attack was getting all the items in the living room away from the walls so that I could prep all the walls for painting. Pup up was not very helpful. This is one of the best looking faux plants I've ever owned. It's nice that it never dies. Oh, hello there. Tiny rug, serves no purpose in here. Good job, team. Good job, team. Let's start prepping these walls. I'm pulling out wall plugs, filling holes with spackle, wiping down the walls from dust, dirt, and spider webs, removing some trim so that the wallpaper that was behind it can never exist in this room again. Well, 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 look what comes back. I knew there was wallpaper under there. It's always five more steps than I want it to be. <laughs> and then sanding off that spackle. It's time to remove the light. Say goodbye to the fairy light, everyone. Goodbye, fairy light. It's off! Then it was finally time to start painting. Cue those lovely paint montages. Do I look like a hot mess? Cause that's how I feel. <laughs> the look and feel in here is just 10 times better. It definitely needs a second coat, but I am shook. And then on top of that, the next thing that I'm about to do to the ceiling is gonna be a game changer too. So stay tuned, see you in a bit. Good morning, everybody. It is day two of this living room makeover and my body is sore. My arm is like, I can't believe I'm gonna be painting more today. Which brings me to today's task. We are focusing on this. We're going to be doing a whitewash. So what that means is I'm actually going to be diluting a white paint. It's a two to one mix. And what we're gonna do is we're basically going to whitewash all of the boards. Now each board has a bit of a different color. What I love about whitewashing is that you actually get to keep the characteristics of the board while changing the color. I'm not gonna do any of the joists. I'm gonna leave that exposed as wood. So I'm using a five inch brush. This is actually built to stain decks and to cover large surface areas. So I'm actually hoping that it might work pretty well for my purposes. It's like staining a deck, instead it's your ceiling. And then I also got this, because if it has a stick and it's slanted like this, I thought it might be good to kind of reach into weird areas, especially when my arms start to get tired because I know that they will be very tired very soon. Let's start uh, whitewashing some boards. When it comes to the mix, from what I've learned, it doesn't really matter what kind of paint you use. Um, just use a white paint, make sure it's latex. I'm gonna use ceiling paint. I don't know, it just kind of felt like the right thing to do. You can actually buy white wash wood stain, but on the high level that we're doing it, <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of a pun in itself. This was definitely the more cost-effective way to go. So, let's pour in our water, and then let's mix. Oh yeah, that is watery. I'm gonna need some towels. We're going in. And I'm gonna start with a tinier brush. Ooh, I really like this arm. This is nice. Yeah, I'm gonna feel this today. Wow. Maybe the bigger brush, is it better for just the beam? So let's find out. Well, it definitely covers more surface area quicker. That's a pro. I am gonna be so jacked after this. DIY Daddy jacked. I think I like the control of the smaller brush better. Hi, this is looking pretty good. Now this is one of the more oranger boards. Interesting to see how this turns out. So. Problem. As you can see, I've done nine beams and what I'm finding is that although it goes on really white, when it dries, it's drying a little bit softer than I hoped. And before I get ahead of myself, I wanted to just be a little bit more dramatic. So I'm actually doing a new mix. What I did was I put in 16 ounces of new paint and then did an equal amount of the old mix into that. So it seems a little bit thicker and we'll see how that goes. I'm gonna go back to the beginning, sadly, and see if it helps. Wish me luck. Take two. Okay, definitely goes on thicker. <sighs> oh. 
Okay, so there's good news and there's bad news. The bad news is it just still wasn't thick enough and it was kind of almost looking like water damaged boards and that was really unfortunate because I got about the third row over halfway done. So I decided to do something. I actually started to paint it with a primer and didn't hate it. Basically, there's a difference between the two boards. It's almost as if the primer is actually creating the whitewash look that I wanted, whereas this side just kind of looks a bit like yeah so based on what I'm seeing here I'm going to go and just continue with the primer I'm not gonna lie I'm very defeated <laughs> it's about six o'clock and I've been working on this since maybe 12 and I've gotten nowhere close to where I wanted to be at this point in time my shoulder wants to fall off but I'm gonna stick to it <sighs> it's gonna be fine I think staying positive everything it's a DIY in progress. So Danny's been working on this for nine hours now and she's almost halfway done. <sighs> it's definitely not a step up from the normal day to day. <laughs> that was an awful, awful one. Ah, still got it. Okay, well, I'm gonna go to bed. So bye-bye, have fun. Good morning DIY friends. It is a brand new day. As you can see, I was up really late last night. I did get a lot accomplished on the ceiling. It looks amazing. Putting on that primer was the right choice. I didn't get the last two rows done. I was just so tired last night and my shoulder this morning is completely wrecked all the way down my arm. But I decided I'm gonna give my arm a little break and we're gonna go on a little shopping spree. I am looking for two different items. One being a coffee table that is either square or uh, circular that has industrial elements on it and wood elements and also some side tables. Again, that has wood elements and something that feels a little industrial. So let's go shopping. Okay, so this is basically what I wanna use as my inspiration. I wanna DIY it myself, but these things are hard to come by at mills near me. So I'm gonna wait and get something a little less expensive. This is too modern. This is too modern. I don't mind this but I'm not really looking for a glass top. I gotta say I'm feeling pretty disappointed on the side table options here and coffee table options so I'm gonna keep looking. So I made it to the next place and this came up and I kind of love it. It's got the industrial elements, the wood top, it's round and it totally fits the mood. I'm kind of in love with it. I think it might be a contender. Okay well that coffee table was not available until December. The search continues. Wow. I kind of like this because it's got the dark epoxy in it. I also really like the height. Very expensive though. Okay, so now that I am back from my shopping adventure, I didn't get a coffee table, sadly, but I did get two side tables, so I didn't go empty-handed. It's time to start making my shelving, which I'm very excited about. I have all of these boards, these are a one by 10 by eight, and I'm gonna cut these all into 28 inch lengths, and I need 12 of them. So into the she shack I go. This is what my wall shelf bracket looks like. It's very simple, it's kind of industrial, but kind of minimal, which is what I like. You can get these in a whole bunch of different sizes online. I will link them all in the description box below. So let's get cutting. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Good work, everybody. Good teamwork. Now that I'm done cutting the boards, sanding the boards, I am going to stain them. I am using an old favorite. I am a broken record. I'm sorry. I'm using special walnut. It's my favorite and it's my home. So I get to use my favorite, okay? We're gonna turn these boards into something beautiful. All the boards are stained and then we also have these, so this is gonna be my trim on the top and I need to start getting that painted. This is a one by four piece of pine lumber and I just wanted something nice and crisp to be at the top of the wall to hide the old trim. So I think this will do. I am about to finish the ceiling and it's gonna feel so good. My shoulder is at a solid 75%. And then after that, we're gonna put up all the trim. I'm sure the editor will trim this section down. <laughs> I'm sure you wish I trimmed my jokes. <laughs> I'm sure you wish I just went away, okay.
How you doing? I need you to hold this. Okay. I don't know if I can do that with my shoulder in this current state of being. I'm in so much pain. DIY is pain. Oh my goodness. Well, that's one way to clean it. Good morning. So I didn't do a very good job signing off yesterday because I got so tired and I was just exhausted. And I was like, I just gotta finish this. Um, but Jeffrey and I worked together and we got the trim up. And I just wanna say the trim looks amazing. I'm very happy with that. And this morning I spent some time sanding down all of the beams, cleaning it up, making it nice. I did try to remove, you see these little like marks? I tried to remove them, but it's not really working. Um, you can still see it. All it's doing is taking the color away from the beam. So you know what? I'm opting to leave it. I don't actually mind it. It just feels a little bit more rustic and I don't want to ruin the beams too much. So, c'est la vie. I am gonna clear out the rest of the stuff in this space and then we're gonna start bringing this room together. And bring it to life we did. Jeff and I first tackled putting up a TV mount to get the TV off the floor. We're so adult, right? After we hung it up, we realized it was way too high. So we took it off, filled in the holes and lowered it down. Hooray. Next up, I got my light and we began to secure this to the wall. I opted for a plug-in sconce versus a hardwired because I wasn't sure this was going to be the orientation of the room forever. However, I wasn't going to leave the cords dangling. So I'm adding in a cord hider from the sconce to the outlet and I was super happy with the final result. It just made it look so clean and so good. Ugh, what a dream. Finally, it was time to hang my shelves. Dana is using two levels at once right now. Did I just level up? <laughs> <laughs> I feel bad for your audience. Oh, that was a good one. I mean, here's another funny thing that happens. I ordered shelf brackets way back in the day, which were the ones you see here, but then I needed more, so I ordered more, but it wasn't until I opened the new pack that I realized they had a different back fixture to them. Whoops. Ironically, I actually liked the new ones better. It was less profile on the wall, so that meant I had to change out all the work I already did. Sometimes that's just the way it should go, folks. Okay, so the shelves went up. Look at those shelves with lights on top of them. Oh my gosh. And then we also have the cord hider running in behind it. We even painted the piece that was exposed and I think it did pretty good. Like from a distance, you don't really notice it and it looks really clean. I even did the TV cords. Pop up, are you impressed too? It's very impressed. It's finally time to put furniture in this room. Yeah. Furniture, furniture. <sighs> okay, let's do it. It was literally the moment I had been waiting for all week with the same emotions as a child on Christmas morning. I finally began to open my big ticket decor items from article. <laughs> Honestly, a big gracious thank you to Article for gifting me these dream decor pieces. I cannot wait to share them with you. This first piece I'm opening is the most beautiful and literally the most comfortable rug I have ever walked on. It's like walking on a cable knit sweater and I was for it. Papa, is this not the nicest rug you've ever been on? I was very excited. This was an eight by 10 rug called the Upsa rug. It has a different knitted pattern on it with tassels on both ends that just makes this rug feel so extra cozy. I'm pretty sure it's a polyester wood blend and it's just so nice under the feet. It's a beautiful off-white color and I love that it lifts the room from the dark floors. Such a contrast to what the room felt like before. You're like, this is the biggest dog bed in the world. I'm in love. The next beautiful unboxed item was my black leather chair. You're exactly how I pictured you in my dreams. They have really nice stuff. This was the Lento lounge chair. And if you're a fan of Low Fox, you also would have seen this chair in his living room makeover. When I saw it in his video, I was like, yep, that's the chair I've been looking for. This chair is made from solid walnut stained wood. And it's not only sexy, it is so friggin' comfortable. <sighs> Okay. It's amazing. It has a foam padded seat and durable buffalo leather upholstery, which sounds super bougie and I'm here for it. Basically sitting in this chair makes me feel very debonair. It's just a really seductive chair. It just calls you in. I kind of just want to sit in it and have long deep conversations about the wonders of the world, you know? 
I don't know how else to describe it, so we're just gonna go with that. Cool, 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 cool. <laughs> The next item was already unboxed because I was just a little impatient <laughs> when it first arrived. But finally having a chance to place this in the living room was a dream come true. This gorgeous corner sectional in Dakota tan is called Nirvana. And now I know why. It's literally the most comfortable couch I've ever been on. This is the spot. Like I'm gonna die here. That was gonna be my spot. No chance. It's got soft leather and down-filled cushions. It literally is Nirvana. The best naming for a couch I think I've ever heard. <laughs> I think the quality I most loved about this couch was the soft leather. I wanted something that no matter the marks, wrinkles, and creases that are put on it, it just adds to the personality and uniqueness of the couch. It's kind of like a leather jacket. The more you wear it, the better it looks. Gives it that lived-in look, you know? This is the couch of my dreams. Yeah. I could fall asleep right now. So good. The last items were more comfort and cozy items. The first item was the Lana Sheepskin in an ivory color and was the perfect addition to my cozy couch corner. Love it. It's gorgeous, darling. You're gorgeous. I should also note that these first are ethically sourced natural products. And the second item was the Gabriola pillow set in ivory. Oh, that's so nice. They are woven from yarn with a looped curly ply and I just love the texture on these. Oh, I love it. So cozy and warm and it's down filled. Nature made it plump up so fast. Just such a lovely contrast color on this caramel couch, which I loved so, so much. Well, it is currently 1130 at night. And I officially have no more energy. So I am going to pack it in and then put this entire space together tomorrow, which I'm so excited. It's been such a journey to get to this point. I love all these pieces. It's like a dream come true. I'll see you tomorrow morning and we're going to bring it all together. Yoo-hoo! <laughs> Danny's new catchphrase. Yoo-hoo. Yoo-hoo! <laughs> okay, it is a brand new day and friends. This room is a mood. This morning, seeing all these beautiful pieces in their place, in the daylight, just changed everything. So it is officially time, let's bring this room together. Starting with new sconces, it was finally time to replace the weird flowery fairy light. Not hating, just not my style. I opted for something industrial and low profile being on a wall that's a major traffic area. This light had a beautiful matte black base, a nice industrial looking brass light head with a glass case that sits around the bulb. It's not attention seeking, but packs enough personality to stay with my clean farmhouse vibe I was going for. I also put a matching one on the back wall as well. Next up, I changed out the curtain rod for a dainty brass one and put my original sheer curtains back up. I love these curtains. I originally sourced them for my art room in the old house, but they found a new home here in my living room this time. And I just love the texture of these and the breezy feeling they provide. They just make the room feel softer. So excited about this edition. My beautiful Matisse poster went up. I sourced this poster from Etsy. The print was so beautiful and was framed in the gold Lumviken frame from Ikea. So classic, simple, and clean. Basically obsessed. Ooh, my new side tables found their final home. These black resin poured live edge tables were a bit of a splurge, but so worth it seeing it in this space. Honestly, they were so perfect, functional, and such a conversation piece for a story of this room. And I love that they don't feel bulky. The pin legs just make them feel so weightless and streamlined. I ah, so love it. Of course, the coffee table, you all know that story, but I did finally find one locally at a boutique hardware store near me, no less. I couldn't believe it and it was the perfect size and height, live edge like I wanted and a decent price. Could not complain about that. Okay, my arch light was so good. It added a lovely mix of modern into the space. It had such sexy, clean lines and industrial look. It was just perfection, just perfection behind the light, this is a wall you can see from the kitchen, so I wanted this space to feel special. Instead of hanging a typical art piece, I decided to think outside the box of what art can look like, to me at least. So I'm hanging this beautiful brass hook I sourced off Amazon and hanging this amazing round jute bag, which I'm filling with a dried flower arrangement, which if you follow me on Instagram, you'll know that this was originally styled on my dining table. I love this little wall. It created such a moment in that spot and I love that I can change out the flowers seasonally or to match my general mood. It's so farmhouse, it's soft and romantic, all of my favorite things. This jute poof? 
Love it. It's playful, it brings in the organic natural vibes I wanted, and super functional. And last, I'm hanging up this round 30 inch mirror that has a wood frame around it. I wanted a piece that would help reflect light into the space and make it feel bigger and brighter and this mirror did just that. It was at that moment I actually decided I wanted a small console table to sit underneath the mirror. I have these shelf brackets. I actually thrifted these and they're gold and I love that about them. So using two gold six inch brackets and some plywood I had kicking around, I cut a board big enough for the brackets, sanding it down and painting it black. And just like that, we have a shelf. All right, I'm gonna put this whole room together and then I'm gonna reveal the final living room makeover. <sighs> we got there, guys. Oh my gosh, check it out, DIY friends. Welcome to my beautiful new DIY living room oasis. Ready to tell a new story? This page turner makeover checked all my boxes for a dream living room. Not only did this space feel fresh, so light and bright, but it was as if I had a space to finally breathe. My ultimate goal was to make it feel open and well curated versus heavy and overdressed, and it did just that. My old ways were to fill as many walls as possible, but this time I let the room tell the story and kept my walls a little more open and clean. Less is more, and it's certainly true in this space. Every item in this room told a piece of the room's story. It shared my love for mixing vintage and modern. a place to display all of my favorite books and poetry, history memorabilia, and of course some of my favorite art like this playful one of Kenobi. This little treasure was actually gifted to me so long ago by a company called Crown & Paw where they feature your pet in adorable personalized pet portraits. This one was called The Colonel. I actually have a 10% off discount for Crown & Paw in my description box if you have a pet too, or this makes a great gift around the holiday, just saying. Oh, and can we talk about the ceiling? Oh my God, what a labor of love. That totally paid off because this ceiling was everything I wanted and more. The beautiful whitewashed boards and the tannins of the wood coming through, it just definitely changed the mood of this space. It felt lifted and brighter and just so complete. I love it. Maybe one day I'll decide to actually ship lap between the beans, but for now, this budget-friendly alternative was a great solution for me. Never in my wildest dreams did I believe that this would be my living room. Thank you so much for watching. All of the items featured in this makeover are linked in the description box. Let me know your favorite part of this makeover or your favorite decor item that was added. And if you're not already, make sure you hit that subscribe button because I have many more DIY inspirations coming your way and you don't wanna miss out. Stay creative, stay positive, and keep on DIY, my friends. Bye-bye.